Well, I want to welcome everyone uh, back to another webinar here about content marketing. In my last webinar that we did here, we discussed a uh, different subject matter that moves the needle with respect to content marketing. But the frustrating thing to me when I look across businesses around the globe is most just don't use content to sell, at least not like they can. And producing content and doing content marketing isn't just about putting it up on your website and saying to yourself, well, it's all done. Now, the last time we talked, we discussed a particular number that's really changing the game in every single industry, and that's this number 70% and the zero moment of truth. Now, I just want to do a refresh on that so that we get down to what is the essential key, what I have found, for using your content to help you in the sales process, all right? So 70% and zero moment of truth, just to refresh. So zero moment of truth, that's that first time somebody calls you, contacts you, walks into your store, fills out a form on your website and says, hey, I wanna have a conversation. So it's that moment when they say, hey, I'm ready to talk to you and they trust you enough to give you their information. And what we know from all of today's studies is that 70% of the buying decision is made before zero moment of truth. 70% of the buying decision is made before they call you, before they contact you, before they fill out that form on your website. It's profound because that number just 10 years ago might have been 10 or 20%. Today it's 70% tomorrow. Who knows what it's going to be, but we know it's not going to get any lower. It's only going to get higher. So what's that mean for you? Well, we better use the internet to sell. And I wanna ask you a question, and you may have never thought about it before, but I specifically want you to think about this. How many pages of your website would a potential client or customer on average be willing to read? How many pages? Well, if you are like most companies, and I've asked this question literally around the world, the average person says two to three pages. Well, if you think two to three pages, well, I would ask you, how long does it take you to read two to three pages of a website? And of course, that's probably gonna be an average of say, let's just call it five minutes. So if we flipped this question on its head and we said to you, is doing business with you worth more or less than five minutes of your time, what would you say? And of course you would say, well, I would I think it's worth a lot more than that, Marcus, and I would agree with you. And I would also say that you're grossly underestimating, at least most companies are grossly underestimating the willingness for consumers to consume content and how many pages they're willing to read in order to be comfortable with the buying decision. Let me give you a very specific example of what I'm talking about. I love this number 30 because it changed my life. And I'm gonna reference my swimming pool company here first, and then we'll talk about how we've seen this in the marketplace. At the beginning of 2012, I was looking at two groups of people on my website, the buyers, the ones that had filled out a form and bought versus the one that had filled out a form, said, I wanna get a quote for a pool, but they didn't buy. And as I was comparing these two groups, both had filled out that form. One did not buy, one did buy. I realized this number 30 just popped out underneath that group that had bought. And of course, that number 30 represented total number of pages viewed. In other words, this is what we found, and listen closely because this is where you're gonna see how it impacts you. We realized that if someone read 30 or more pages of our website before the initial sales appointment, they would buy 80% of the time. Now the average for appointments to close was about 20% at the time, and so it was a dramatic increase. And of course, what was happening over the course of those 30 pages? Well, trust was building through the education and trust equals sales. And so when we discovered this, we realized that we had to do something differently because for years we've been doing it the wrong way. You would call me up and say, hey, Marcus, can I have a quote for a swimming pool? And I would come out to your house and that's exactly what I would do. I would give you a quote. I would say, sure. But you see, that wasn't the right way to do it. Not if we wanted people to cross that magical 30 page view threshold so that our closing rates would dramatically increase. 
And that's when we started this thing we call today assignment selling. So how does assignment selling work? So think for a second that you've just said to me, you've called me up and you've said, hey, Marcus, can you come out to our house and give us a quote for a pool? Instead of me just saying, sure, I'll be there Friday, this is how it now sounded. Sure, I would love to come to your house, but you're getting ready to spend a lot of money. And if you're going to spend a lot of money, you don't want to make a mistake. So that you don't make any mistakes, I'm going to make sure you're well-educated. And so as to educate you, I'm going to send you a couple things in an email as we talk on the phone right now. And the first thing I'm going to send you is a link to a video that shows you the entire process of having a swimming pool installed in your backyard. So this way, you're not going to have to ask me when I come out to your house, hey, Marcus, what does this look like? You're going to see it for yourself. So that's the first thing I need you to do. The second thing I'm going to need you to do is I'm going to attach an ebook or like a guide to this email, and it's going to address all your questions about swimming pools right now, like should you get a cover? What type of cover is best for you? What's the best material for a cover? Should you get a heater? What's the best type of heater? How do electrical versus gas heaters compare? So all these questions we're going to address in this little ebook or guide. Now, it's a little bit long, about 30 pages, but I promise it will be worth your time. Would you make sure to review those things before our appointment on Friday. And 90% of the time, the person is going to say, sure. At which point we say, now Friday morning, I'm gonna give you a call just to confirm you took the time to do those things. Now that, my friends, is assignment selling. And that completely changed the game for us. And I would ask you, can you implement some type of assignment selling so as to ensure your prospects and customers are more educated before you talk to them. Because we did this, dramatic things happen with our business. Let me give you an example of a person. His name is Bill Grizzard. And Bill Grizzard did an, this is a typical lead sheet that we found on our website using advanced um, analytics. And in this case, this individual, Bill Grizzard, he did an organic search using Yahoo. He searched for the phrase, cost of fiberglass pool. He landed on our website. But look for a second at how many pages he viewed. 375 pages. I can remember when I saw this the first time, I thought to myself, my goodness, this guy has a lot of time on his hands. 375 pages he's now viewed on the site. But that very same night, I looked at another person, and that person had filled out a form as well, and that person's name was Joni Grizzard. Now, this was his wife, and she had done an organic search using Yahoo, and she searched for Richmond, Virginia pools, and she proceeded to read 149 pages of the website. Now, look at this, folks, between these two people, they have viewed over 500 pages of the website. You say that's a lot, and I agree, that's a lot. And what do you think this sales appointment was like? Because I went on that sales appointment, and let me tell you, the sale was already done. I didn't have to earn their business, I had already done it. You see, they had already reached that point. They just weren't at 70%, they were way past 70%. In fact, I'd argue that the that the sale was 99.9% .9 done when I got into the home. And that's when I realized something very, very simple. That content, assuming it's honest and transparent, it's the greatest sales and trust building tool in the world. It is. It's better than any salesperson you have. It's better than any, it, it doesn't sleep. It doesn't take breaks. It doesn't ask for commissions. All it does is work for you, but you've got to do it the right way. You've got to be honest. You've got to talk about the things that prospects and customers want to talk about. But if you do that and if you put it on your website, they will not only read, they'll not only watch, but they'll read and watch beyond what you currently realize. Let me show you just a couple stats that will blow you away. Here's the 2013 stats for river pools. In 2013, our average customer read 105 pages of the site. Think about that for a second. We sold 95 pools that year. 95 pools. And the average read 105. If you had come to me when we started this process of content marketing six years ago and you said, Marcus, do you realize your average customer would be willing to read 
over 100 pages of your site, what do you think I would have said to you? I would have said you're crazy. I would have said you don't know what you're talking about. And of course, I would have been wrong because I was underestimating our prospects and our customers, which is so oftentimes the case. And just to put this in even more detail for you, when the economy was great and business was booming and anybody could get a pool, we maxed out in 2007 at 75 pool sales. In order to reach those 75 sales, we had to go on 230 sales appointments. After content marketing and after implementing assignment selling and after ensuring that our prospects, when we saw them, they were well-informed and they were well-educated. In 2013, those 95 pool sales came from 120 sales appointments. Think about that. Think about the amount of time that has been saved, about the amount of money that's been saved, and how the morale is elevated because of that. This is all because of the power of content, content done wisely. I would challenge you to stop underestimating the willingness for people to become more informed and educated and comfortable with a buying decision through information. Give them the information. Use it in your sales process. Put it in the hands of your salespeople. And if you do that, everything just might change. And as always, you can email me at marcus1 at thesalesline.com if you have any questions, if you ever want to just take a quick look at your site, if you want these slides, anything like that, just email me marcus1 at thesalesline.com. That is my personal email address.